Welcome, everybody. How's it going? All right. It's such a massive audience that I have trouble seeing everybody. I know. Um, wanted to introduce both of us. My name is Noah D. Smith. This is Class Quant. We work at the GRCC Media Technologies Department, and we do a lot of things, many, many things, principal of which is probably making videos for the college. Promotional materials, instructional aids, internal communications, event coverage, such as this conference, um, and other things. So this is a writing conference, and we make videos. Um, so you might be wondering, why are you speaking? And we're speaking because even though we're not writers, uh, we do need to know how to write to make the things that we make, um, including videos, events, humorous things, and promotions. So that's what we're going to talk about, how we write. Uh, just a quick snapshot of how we write for some of those things. Um, anything else? Yeah, I think um, part of what's challenging for us is lots of times we'll put together a video and we'll interview some students or some staff and it all gets edited without any formal script, so there's no narrator. So for us to present something that's valuable to you, who I assume you're all learning about writing on some level, um, we had to dig through everything we've done in the last year just to find a few examples where we actually wrote a script ahead of time and then had somebody read it or perform it. So what you're gonna see today is kind of the exception to the approach we take. We usually just rely on the audio we get from the interviews we do for the videos we work on. So Right. Yeah. So we have three things that we're going to show you today, and uh, they are examples of what we do. And the first of which is something that I did. Um, and to start off this example, I want to ask you guys, do you know what distilled water is? Does everybody know distilled water? If you don't, it's okay. Um, you know when you're making pasta or noodles and you're boiling water, um, water vapor comes off the top, right? So distilled water is taking that water vapor that comes off the top of boiled water and actually collecting all of it and then drinking it. The boiling process and taking the water vapor and distilling it in that way gets rid of all the impurities, all the unnecessary stuff, all the stuff that you don't want in your body, that's distilled water. And poetry is a lot like that as well. Um, it's distilling big, huge ideas uh, down into sometimes single sentences um, or even lines that wouldn't be considered a sentence. Um, but within that small distilled amount of information, there is big, huge, grand ideas. And um, those examples, distilled water, poetry, though I, I wouldn't say my writing is poetry, per se, but... It's poetry. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's oftentimes what we have to do when it comes to promotions. So for this first example, um, Student Life wanted a promo, a 60-second promo to send out to students and alumni, inviting them to homecoming. 2017, this was in fall of 2017. And the amount of information I get, the amount of raw data is right here. So this is all of the raw data, uh, all of the raw information regarding everything that's happening with homecoming 2017. Now, if I were to just have class on camera or the president on camera or one of you reading this information, uh, I would, venture a guess that it would not make anybody want to come. Uh, <laughs> if you just have someone on camera reading, uh, breakfast for the first 150 students with Raider card, donuts, cider, and coffee, judging for department occurs throughout the day, Tuesday, October 17th, TBA. Obviously, that's really boring and kind of nonsensical and hard to digest easily. So the process involves distilling this information into something that is quite digestible and not even just digestible, entertaining, and makes you want to do whatever it is that we want you to do. So that process involves first looking at what is unnecessary in this data. So think to yourselves, looking at this list, and there's a lot, it's kind of small, so sorry if you can't see it all, but what in this list 
is just kind of unnecessary. The goal of the promo being come to homecoming and come to the homecoming events. With that in mind, that message in mind, what in here is just, does not need to be included. Then you also think about this information in regards to what has to be included, what for sure should be mentioned that's going to accomplish your goal of getting people to come to homecoming and participating in homecoming events, right? So those are the first two things that I think through when I get all of this information. Then, of course, it's writing for 60 seconds. And writing for that 60 seconds is distilling, again, this information down to what has to be included, removing what's unnecessary, and writing it in such a way that makes you entertain and want to come. So the actual um, script ended up being, Go ahead. yeah, this. So obviously this is a lot less information. Um, starts out with GRCC hasn't had a homecoming in a long time. That changes now. So hopefully that first sentence encompasses quite a bit, right, in just that first sentence. We've gone a long time without having a homecoming. A lot of students probably wouldn't even know, oh, we have a homecoming? Um, and that changes now. And that suggests that there is going to be a homecoming and whatever follows is going to have all kinds of information about homecoming. So it's encompassing a lot of big ideas in just the, that, that first line. And then it goes on to talk about the, only the things that are necessary, leaving out some of the boring, mundane details, right? Um, that you're invited, all students, all alumni, you're invited to come, the dates, the week that it happens, and that we need you there to start the tradition the right way. Um, the biggest part of homecoming that year was the end with a um, tailgate and the volleyball game. So that was what I ended it with. That was really the only specific event that we actually mentioned. Um, there, it, there is a, yeah, there's a tailgate up at the top, but otherwise this kind of generic information that hopefully sounds fun, sounds interesting. Not getting bogged down into, de into the details, but distilling it down into what it is as a big idea. Um, and then of course, at the end, where you can go on the website to, uh, to go check out more information if you do wanna go. And then uh, our president often likes to ad lib and go off the cuff, President Bill Pink, the president of the college. So I didn't really have an exact ending for him. I just wanted him to ad lib something about seeing, seeing you there. Whoever's watching this promo, seeing you there. So that's what he did. Um, so this is after distilling that information down, this is what the script ended up being. So we can take a look now at what the promo looked like as well. Oops. GRCC hasn't had a homecoming in a long time. That changes now. Every single student, every single alumni, you're invited to Homecoming 2017. Come to festivities that promote school spirit, community, and fun. Even a tailgate before our last home volleyball game. Everything happens October 16th through October 19th. It's the week to connect with all things GRCC, and we need you here to experience it, to start this tradition the right way. We're topping it off with our last home volleyball game, so be there to give our team the biggest crowd we've ever had. It's our Raiders and our Rapids. So if you want to know more, go to grcc.edu slash homecoming. You know it's going to be fun, and you know what? I'll see you there. Okay, any questions about any of that avalanche of information? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important to keep in mind, I mean, you saw the president of the college deliver all the lines, and he's really good on camera. But the whole time Noah was writing that, he has that person in mind. He knows that President Pink is going to be able to deliver that material really well, but the whole time he's writing, correct me if I'm wrong, you're actually hearing Dr. Pink's voice in your head. Yeah, definitely. Hearing him in my head and also thinking about, um, oddly enough, 
oftentimes my wife <laughs> because uh, she's the person I know who most is the l- least likely to be impressed by anything. So uh, if you think about that person in your life who is the hardest to impress, that's could be of, of use to you. As I'm reading what it is I'm writing, what would she be entertained by? When would she get bored? Which is, she'd get bored quite easily. So how am I writing this in a way so that the people that are watching it aren't going to get bored, are going to stick with it? And yes, for sure, imagining Dr. Pink's saying it, for, definitely. Because ultimately the audience for that piece are you. You know, we want all of you to come to the homecoming and what are you going to see if a link shows up in front of you online, on Facebook somehow? Is it going to make you, number one, watch it? Because you got to watch it before you even consider coming to homecoming. So hopefully that worked. Um, the one other thing I'll say about this, I'll go back to the script Noah has that you heard Dr. Pink read. Usually companies that produce video content will not only have the words the narrator is going to read, but they'll include the visuals that are going to go along with it. And that's a step we don't usually take because between Noah and I, we've got a pretty good idea of all the material we have in our archive that can illustrate different things he's going to say. Um, Obviously, we've got a certain level of graphic skills, so all the animation you saw, all the editing Noah did, even the cut of music that you heard Noah composed um, that was underneath everything. Lots of times that's indicated on the written script, what images are going to go where. And we're just primarily relying on our memory of things that we've shot on campus to use when we put together something like this. So the next piece we're going to show you is a video that we put together for fundraising activity that happens usually every year called Scholar Fest. And it's raising money for scholarships. It's a big dinner that's held down at um, DeVos Place in one of the ballrooms. And every time they invite people to spend a lot of money on a ticket to raise money for these scholarships, they'll always pick one person who has helped GRCC, usually an alumni, member of the alumni, to honor. And this script is for a video we did that was honoring an alumni whose name is Sarah Smolensky. She's a local judge that attended here in the mid-70s, went on to U of M, and then got her law degree, and um, eventually was elected to the circuit circuit court here in Kent County, and she's been a circuit court judge for quite a long time. So they decided they wanted to honor her And um, a couple of folks at the college's foundation, that's the area of the college that raises money and puts on this event, had seen another video from some other college where students performed basically a rap talking about, I don't know that they were honoring a particular person, but they had a bunch of people who are donors to the college get to appear in the rap. And they said, we want to do something like that, but we want to do it honoring this judge, Sarah Smolensky. So we kicked around the idea um, of having someone from our theater department who's a teacher there and an alumni, his name's Sammy Publes, be on camera, perform a rap. And we actually turned initially the writing of this video over to him, said, let's see what you come up with on paper. So he got together with a friend, and they came up with a concept where at the event, on stage, there would be somebody portraying Sarah Smolensky when she was a student here, so a much younger person, being interviewed live, and then periodically, we would play a video that was the actual rap. And what you're seeing here is the beginning of that initial script. So that's why at the top of the screen it says interview live. Um, 
there's a host who's introducing Sarah Smolensky and starts asking her questions live, and then we go to the video. Um, and the video, again, is a wrap. And what, an, another thing I want to point out before we actually show you the video and the, the updated script, because this went through like four revisions, was lots of times we'll come up with a concept for something or somebody will suggest a concept. And when you put it on paper, you have to anticipate that somebody is going to want to censor portions of it because they think it may cross a line and be a little insulting. So in this case, Sarah Smolensky is a lifelong Catholic, comes from a very strong Catholic family, and would make the sort of joke that's in this first line of the rap pretty regularly. She wouldn't flinch at it. And I'll just read it out loud. My parents cranked him out. I was one of 10 because Catholic families make a baby, then they do it again. I knew that wasn't going to fly when we showed it to the folks at the foundation. But again, we're walking this line where we want somebody to be creative up front, knowing that we're going to be cutting it down and making it more, I guess, acceptable, presentable to a room of people that might be insulted by something, but trying to stay as true as we can to what inspired those words in the first place. So when I saw that, I knew that was going to change. Um, so, and this is just one example of many changes that occurred. So rather, number one, than do the interview portion live, we decided let's put it all into the video. So we'll pre-shoot the interview ahead of time, edit that into the video, and then go to the actual music video portion of it and just play in front of everyone one long video. And the modification, it's a pretty minor one, but it was enough to get it, for lack of a better phrase, past the censors. So we just switched it to my parents had a few of us instead of my parents cranked them out. Um, even so, one aspect of this video was there are a bunch of people in this community who Sarah has helped that they wanted to appear in the video. One of those people was from the Catholic diocese who lip syncs one of the lines. You'll see her early on. Everybody wanted to see the script ahead of time before they agreed to be on camera. When she saw that, she was really reluctant about being on camera because she's Catholic and she doesn't want to perpetuate a negative stereotype about Catholics just having a lot of children. When she saw the revision, not even the first line, right. the revision. When she saw the revision. So when you're writing for video, people put a lot of trust in you that despite what they see on paper, that you're going to produce something that isn't going to ultimately be demeaning to them, that if it's a joke, everyone will, will take it for the humor and not for any negative aspects it may have. And I think when you actually see the video, you'll agree that we pulled it off. She ended up performing in it. Nobody raised an issue afterwards. Um, so, but I just want to... We did get a tweet from the Pope, but yeah, we worked through it. Other than that, he's a busy guy. Um... It's just an example that there are obviously differences between what you think is ideal to what you can actually accomplish. And the struggle is to come as close to the ideal as possible. So with that, you okay? My name is Gary Schenk, the date is March 27, 1977, and I'm here interviewing GRJC student Sarah Smolensky. It's Smolensky. Oh, sorry, Smolensky. So, Sarah, tell me a little bit about yourself. What is your family like? Well, I think it's probably like most people's. Is it a very big family? Well, my parents had a few of us, I was one of ten. Catholic families make a baby, then they do it again. We had so many 
many kids. I knew I had to stand out. The smartest, strongest, and by far the most of I went to Catholic Central before it was cool. Hey, it was a principal, but you know I ran that school. I had what could be called unbridled ability combined with benevolence and charming humility. Wow, with that many siblings, you probably have to compete for attention. Yeah, that's why I learned how to juggle to stand out and be more popular. Wait, you think that juggling makes you more popular? Yeah, if you're good at it. So you can juggle? Yeah, watch. <clears throat> oh. Wow, that is memorable. So tell me a little bit about basketball. I heard you're so good at basketball because you're so tall. Tall, uh, I think there's more to it. First things first, let's get one thing straight. GRJC is partly why I'm great. Oh, that wasn't just taller, I was also a baller. And in the classroom, a self-proclaimed road scholar. Being good on hardwood will make me great in court. Get a bachelor's at Michigan and handle civil tort. I'm a wild child, hey. my soul can't be tamed. I'll even flash a crowd at a Wolverine game. Wait, you plan to flash the crowd at a U of M game? Mm, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But, but it would be a good story I could get a lot of mileage from. That would be a good story. What would be an even better story would be you graduating from Michigan, getting your law degree from Cooley, and then becoming a judge for 30 years. Whoa, whoa, whoa. are you planning out my life for me? Actually, maybe mine. Although, I don't think I could be a judge. Yeah. You don't seem smart enough. No. Although, that could just be a part of what you accomplish. I mean, imagine, if you live a life of generosity and integrity, how many organizations would recognize you? Gene King Leadership Award, I'll win it. Chief Judge of the District Court, I'm in it. Most influential woman, six, eight, 10, and 12, I'll take the ideas off just to spread the wealth. Generations of felons will come to thank me. I'll give them second chances, they can go free. Cause when they take the stand and give me their plea, I'll say, you'll do time at GRCC. So, given that you'll be a confident and articulate leader, just imagine all the nonprofit organizations you could raise money for. Yeah, if I'll only be that generous. I'll bet some of them don't even exist today in 1977. Be a grow, Dominicans of the GR bar. With me at the mic, their funds will go far. Pilgrim Manor, St. John's, Kids Food Basket too. I'm sure I'll bring it in for the GR public schools. Women lawyers, senior neighbors, and rave need to grow. I'll Pull my sister in for a two-woman show Got a council foundation, just look to me Aye. And even hospice will count on MC Smolensky
So, <laughs> I'll go back to the previous script. Um, so there is a bunch of examples of things that got changed. I think one of them even was the three women from the community. One of them is Sarah's wife, one of them is her sister, and one of them is a woman she's partnered with um, from a local nonprofit. The scene where the three of them are in the orange jumpsuits representing criminals, again, we had to be careful because the woman who saw that scripted, who was African American, was really cautious about what sort of message that was going to send. Um, but ultimately, I think knowing that Sarah, the judge, pretty frequently sends different people to jail, it was an appropriate costume to have them wear along with dressing up as graduates and dressing up as uh, nuns and basketball players. So um, there's a lot of inside humor there too that the folks who were present in the audience got. So again, it's an example of writing for who you know is going to be in the audience. So, but all that said, what you have on paper and what it ends up looking like depend tremendously, primarily on the ability of the person who's going to shoot and edit, and in this case, compose the music, which was Noah, to make it all work. And he can tell you a little bit about taking something that theoretically looked good on paper, but required some special effort to pull it off. Yeah, I'll just quick give super brief example of that so we can move on to the next and last example of writing for these videos that we make. Um, so the portion that's actually the hip hop portion where there's bars for a rap, <clears throat> that was written by initially, again, a former student who is a, an actor in the community and nationally, Sammy Publis. He wrote the bars initially, uh, as I said, but uh, when he came in, to actually see how the bars lined up with some of the beats and music I was working with and thinking of as the initial um, song. As he would rap to, to those ideas, it was clear that some of these bars he'd written needed to be changed uh, and needed to be adjusted or flat out rewritten to match um, the flow of, of the beat and the music much better. So even though he had written these um, and they were essentially uh, the same ideas that were in the the words came through, it definitely had to be revised when it came to actually putting them next to real music, putting them in an actual video. Um, they had to be completely changed in some instances. So um, it's one thing to have them on paper, as you say, but then to... Um, put it together with an ensemble, so many things going on, uh, video, music, comedy, knowing who is in the audience, all of these things, it, it can take um, the ability to be malleable with your work and the ability to recognize when things do need to change and change them to match the other components of your project appropriately. Yeah, that, had any of you ever heard that music that was in the chorus that Sarah, it's a song by is it Jefferson? Starship, Jefferson Starship. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever hear that before? So my generation, maybe Mercilada's. <laughs> yeah. So that was, you know, it was a big song for a short period of time, and it fit since her name was Sarah. Those three women came in to lip sync to a recording that we had done with three students from our vocal program. So they took the lyrics that had been rewritten sang them, and then these women came in to lip sync. And I know Noah had a fair amount of frustration that the recording we got from our students wasn't clear enough that you'd be able to figure out what they were saying. And that's why the only time words appear on the screen during this whole video is during mm -hmm. the chorus, because we ended up agreeing We've got to reinforce what's being said just to make the joke really clear. Yeah, I actually really do not like having the words up there. I think it 
kind of ruins those parts of the video. But in order for people to understand what they're singing and get the joke, like they have to be there. Yeah. And it's a hard thing for you to judge now because you've seen it and heard it. If we had shown this to you without those words, I'm going to take a guess that some of the subtleties would have been lost. And we were kind of beating people over the head with the humor that night. So, good. Any questions? Okay. So, the last um, piece we're going to bring up here is one that we just did for the rededication of the Ford Fieldhouse. If you haven't been over there to check it out and have any sense of what it used to look like, it's, you should go over there and look because it's much nicer, much nicer place to work out, much nicer lobby, much nicer classrooms. But that building was originally built in 1976 and it was named after President Ford at the time, who was, it was the night before the election, he came here for the dedication. And it's always been big point of pride that we have this building named after a native son from Grand Rapids who went on to, you know, become the president of the United States. Um, so we were asked for the rededication ceremony, which was a couple of weeks ago, where they invited a bunch of folks to come for like a little ribbon cutting um, to watch a video and hear Sarah Smolensky again, coincidentally, who was a basketball player the first year that building was open, she hosted all the dignitaries who came on stage to speak, one of whom was Gerald Ford's son, Michael. So it was a big deal for the college. Everybody who was invited has a sense of nostalgia about this institution and that facility in particular, whether it was because they were an athlete or you know, in exercise science or whatever. So they asked us to put together a video that sort of captured that sense of nostalgia, but also talk a little bit about some of the new features that are in the building and what that's gonna mean to our athletic programs going forward. So what this video I think is a good example of is, again, realizing what resources you have available so the narrator for this is Sarah Smolensky, the judge. Um, we have a certain number of pictures of Gerald Ford when he was here in 1976. We had a couple of recordings of him giving presentations in the field house that we ended up incorporating into the video along with the old pictures. Um, and then we interviewed five or six people that either remembered what happened back then, why the building was built, or who are talking about what it's gonna mean for the future of the program. So you take all that material, you pick small portions of it, and wrote a script kind of in anticipation of what people were gonna say. And if you look at this script, I have an opening quote from one of Gerald Ford's recordings. I have Sarah Smolensky, who's the narrator, talking about how she started off here in the community and what this building means. And then I just typed in, when I wrote the script, a quote from so-and-so, who I knew we were going to interview. I didn't know what she was gonna say, but I knew we would conduct a long enough interview we could just pull an excerpt from that. A quote from someone else, same thing. Um, so, this is an example of putting something together using resources we have in our archives and knowing we're gonna go out and get a few more interviews. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very high honor for me to participate on the campus of the Grand Rapids Junior College. It's one of the best in quality of such educational institutions throughout the entire United States. I have lived in the Grand Rapids area for almost all of my life. If it weren't for the time I was away for college and vacations, I'd have to say that I've been here for my entire existence which means I have some sense of what has come into this community to stay and what has just been passing through. Without question, 
the Gerald R. Ford Fieldhouse has been a constant for our region. It has served as the home for an amazing variety of events and prominent individuals, starting with its original dedication in 1976. That was when its namesake, campaigning to keep his job as president, came to GRCC to be honored by our board and college president, Richard Calkins. Oh, it was exciting. My goodness, I should say so. Everybody in town, I think, was there or, would, or wanted to be there anyway. And uh, the field house was filled. I was privileged to be on stage with him and have a photo taken. And it just was such a good feeling. It was just really, really exciting. <laughs> The music building, it was the old gymnasium. We really didn't have the kind of facilities that um, an emerging junior college and growing junior college needed. Not just athletics, but uh, you know the, the whole physical education department at the time. We decided that it would really be a good idea to build a, a field house that would also be accessible to the community. And so I think that was the real reason behind it. Of course, Jerry Ford wouldn't be the only sitting president, former president, or presidential candidate to choose the field house as the place to connect with West Michigan. George W. Bush, John McCain, and Jimmy Carter have all made stops here, knowing that this facility would let them get close to a large number of local citizens. Serving as the place to host community events is a key role that the field house has had. From the Great American Talk Fest, to the Giants Banquet, to the Martin Luther King Day celebrations, the Latino Youth Conference, the African American Male Achievement Conference, just to name a few. We have hosted the circus, all staff gatherings for schools and foundations, and even housed patients and staff from Spectrum Hospital when an Aeromed helicopter crashed on their roof in 2008. Laughter has bounced off its walls during Gilda's Club Laugh Fest, and its lockers have served as the place that runners shower off after running in the Riverbank Run. Which brings me to its most important role, what it has meant to local athletes, not the least of whom was yours truly. I happened to play on the first women's basketball team who called the Ford Fieldhouse home, the same year I graduated from GRCC in 1977. In the subsequent 41 years, these walls have seen tremendous talent in both men's and women's athletics, providing an opportunity to compete that many of these students might not otherwise get. Hit it! Hit it Just having, you know, having went to school here, uh, having played here myself and coached for 20 years, it's very special to me. We won a lot of games here. Uh, I know it was a tough place for opponents to come and play. went home to so many great memories for not only our program but a lot of the athletic programs. Um, it's kind of stood the test of time. We've always taken a sense of pride, you know, playing in our home gym and kind of protecting our home court, playing in front of your home crowd, you know, and in front of your home professors that get to come and your home uh, students that get to come and kind of cheer you on. When you walk through the Paganelli foyer and into Huntsberger Arena, you have some sense the individuals who brought out the best in our student athletes whether they played or practiced here. If you visit the natatorium, you'll see the former home of our swim team, which included distinguished alumni like Judge John Hallisey and writer Tom Rademacher. Dave Clark used to tell me uh, whenever I'd get uh, disenchanted and I'd use a word or a phrase like, you know, do I have to? And he'd say, nope, you get to. The transformation that this facility has undergone in the last year is extraordinary. Today, community members who belong to the health club will be thrilled by the changes. Coaches will have an advantage when it comes to recruiting high school talent. But most importantly, students and staff who are part of our athletics and exercise science program will get to grow and learn in spaces that rival any facility around. It's going to feel like a university. It's going to feel just the same when they transfer, being here at GRCC. And our students are super lucky to have that experience. And they come in, they're going to feel like, wow, this is real. This is a new building. And this is for me. I think it does make me more proud because we have like a nice facility to go to now. As it turned out, the basketball team wasn't my only featured appearance at the field house. I was lucky enough to be called back to speak at commencement in 2003, and that may be the annual event which connects our students to us more than anything else. 
when you live as long as I have and you see what has happened to this city and to community college particularly, it, it's just the most wonderful feeling in the world. <laughs> this building, our Ford Field House, has represented the opportunity that is the purpose of this college, a fact that President Ford himself recognized when he returned to speak in 1979. I have been reading and hearing about the utilization of this facility. I firmly believe that this group of young people are fully prepared to do an outstanding job for our country, and I'm proud of them, as I'm sure all of you are. So that's that. Obviously a lot of writing went into that and a certain level of knowledge about the history of the college and that building. Um, a few years ago was the 100th anniversary of the college, so we produced a 100th anniversary book that helps when you're looking up certain facts. And you learn a little more by doing the interviews, and there's always a few other people still on campus who can answer questions to make sure that when you write the script, that it's accurate. Any questions about that or anything else we've shown? Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks. Good luck. Appreciate it.